Ah, <laughs> oh, did you ever sell Herbalife? No. Um, you would at least enjoy the the, the intake meeting. <laughs> you slang Herbalife? I used to. You slang you slang powder. Yeah, <laughs> I got out of the game though. <laughs> but they set it up. It was like some some weird uh, Dominican lady that I worked with. She set me up. She's like, here, just go to here. Here's the plug. She was. I That's had a, Queen of the South. Dude, I met her at a Borders <laughs> in Springfield <laughs> to buy the kid off of her, but then she made me go to like this event at, at the Ramada. <laughs> <laughs> she went to the event. Yeah, it's uh, it was at the Ramada down by the Philly airport. Probably a lot of fit mommies. No. <laughs> <laughs> really? Dude, it's it's it looked like people that have been hit by trolleys. Like <laughs> everybody there is fucked up for some unknown reason. And um when they start the event, I brought my my daughter with me and they asked me to have her sit outside the room. What? All right, so I had her sit outside. <laughs> Dude, Full then, disclosure. Yeah, and then they, why'd they have it? trade secrets? Didn't you I just don't say know. you would never be groomed by a coach? Uh, I'm rethinking that now. Yeah. Uh, could you actually have your teen daughter sit in my car for this, please? <laughs> <laughs> no and then they start blasting. Uh, Yo, simply the best. <laughs> and everybody were there they clapping like over their heads. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, was it because like uh, were they worried about her getting traits? Was she like not old enough to I sign an? No, yeah. I still don't know why they because at the time she was yeah, it's like nutrition what's the three she was probably four so I had my four-year-old daughter sit inside the conference room at Ramada uh, while this like 45 minute presentation went on and they start what did she do what did she do yeah it just sat out there now full scope now that I think about like I'm not just saying this because I sound like an awful person but my my wife might have been with her yeah that would make more sense because yeah, I don't yeah. think I would leave her by herself I gotta yeah. I'll verify with my wife <laughs> But when they start blasting the uh, share song, um, it's like a procession of people that sell Herbalife that are also giving testimonials as to how much weight they've lost. Fuck. And then afterward, like the head guy comes up to me and all the other newbies and they're just like talking about like all the shit they've been able to buy with their commissions and how yeah. much money we could buy. And then I had to meet the Dominican lady at Borders in Springfield <laughs> to buy my kid. I was like, what a normal job interview would be. Your boss just flexing. Like you're interviewing for like an IT yeah. job and he's just like... Listen, I need I need someone for Windows infrastructure, and it's just like, bro. By the way, I got a PS5. So <laughs> this is a pretty sick kid. Throws his Kia keys across the table. He's like, yeah, you know, dude. They should do that anyway. When you come in, like, we are the best. <laughs> Every, do you ever catch like a like an, you have on a Target early enough where they're going like one two three yeah yeah it's Walmart thing right they do it in Target yeah, too. They do it in Target. I watch I walk past the Target and watch them all do it and like like fro it kind of startled me and they're all like ah fuck. It's probably not fun when like regular people see that who aren't like. I might start doing that at work. You should get, dude. Now that I'm in management, I might start making dudes like clap and shit. You should go like stand in a circle. You should go like Tony Robbins level every morning, just being like, and you can. You should put on the fucking headset. I worked at a place <laughs> where the guy every Monday morning would do a Monday morning sales thing, headset, and come out on the floor, Wolf of Wall Street style, and be like, "Come on, guys, dude, nobody gave a fuck. This whole place, <laughs> nobody cared. Yeah, they would do mass firings." Just fire like they would be like everybody in this boardroom. They, oh, you guys are, should all leave like 25 people at a time. Cool. Yeah, it's pretty sick. So I turn over, but I left. I was three weeks and I fucking no call, no showed. Oh, that's the best way it's to leave a job, man. Move, dude. I, I never it. give two weeks. I gave an email. Oh, dude, two weeks is bullshit, dude. Mm -hmm. That's not Steve Jobs level, dude. If you give two weeks, jobs will just disappear. Never give a job two weeks notice. Yeah. Instantly, you vanish in mystery, and they go, "What the fuck happened?" Yeah, that's yeah, pretty you, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I know he was cool. That guy fucking rules. And then come back a month later and just go, "What? Two months have passed?" <laughs> Be like, hmm. I, I quit a job on the fly at Little Caesars, and I went back like two months later just because I had no money. And I knew I was like, "Fuck!" Like I was calculating the hours that I would have had. I was like, "I would, I probably have a check for forty bucks in that safe." And Fair. I went back, and they're just like, "No, we're not giving you a check." Should be like, "Prove it." Prove you guys only. I'm not that bucks. slick, man. So you went back to Caesars. I went back to Little Caesars to see if they had a check for me. And did they, you buy? Across the eat? Rubicon. True. <laughs> did you buy anything? Did you? Wait, all right, anyway, let me get like a small personal pack. I did not, man. Nice. I hated that fucking job, man. Yeah, pizza places can be, in my experience, can be. There's tough, a, there's tough a pizza job. place in the neighborhood I grew up in that I always dreamed about working at. It was so like hot and smelly. <laughs> And it was, looked so exciting, and I love the mozzarella sticks so much. And I just like, like as a kid, I would daydream about like, dude, someday, dude, I'm gonna be on that fucking griddle, just chopping cheese steaks and like 
one mozzarella stick at a time. Just a clunk. Dude, you're, right you're a little Caesars breath. material. You would have fit in mm-hmm. great there. Damn. Caesars, yeah. Tossing, I did enjoy spitting the pizzas. That was oh, it was so much fun, man. That was something I enjoyed. And I'm, you know, how would you say you're pretty good at it? I was great at it. You, it, it doesn't take much. I learned literally in like maybe mm-hmm. three hours I was able to toss well, it. Well, if Italian people can do it. True. Fair point. How hard can it be? No, I appreciate you bringing that up. That's mm-hmm. a very fair point. Yeah. They are pretty unskilled at life. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they traditionally had to resort to a lot of murder. <laughs> <laughs> violent people. Yeah, very yeah. violent people. Very criminally minded bunch. Yeah. yeah. They are like chimps. True. Italian people? Oh, yeah. They're like hairier chimps. <laughs> <laughs> You ever see a counter dude in a pizza place like flirting with people's girlfriends? Yeah. That's the best. It kind of rules. God. I thought about that recently, dude, of like, because there are some dudes that just like, you get dudes in relationships who are just like, I'm a flirt, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and it's easy to find a dude who's a cheater, who's just kind of like, mm-hmm. they just, they, they all do the same stuff. They'll be like, you're looking, looking good. Always grabbing people's wives and shit. You're like, dude, yeah. Take you're care of her. Yeah. You better take care of her. <laughs> It's dude. It's pul- else, dude's well, pulsing. Every Italian dude, you got a good like, guy. Every Italian dude acts like R. Kelly. It's fucking R. Word Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> would you consider getting a job at a pizza place like that now? I, actually, my mouth started watering when I thought dude, of it. You I would love a little seizure. Seizure. Although I'm going to warn you, I'm going back to old oil, London. It'll turn you off, though. My my fr- dude, uh, brother going in this place. It was so small that it was like the counter, and then the kitchen almost backed up to the counter. It stunk every time I went in, and I was just like, I'm addicted to this. My brother worked at Wings to Go, and he ruined him. It ruined Wings to Go forever. Dude, when you work again next to a fryer dude, all people day, people were it visibly makes you sick. sweaty. Every time you went in, it was a bunch of fat people visibly sweaty. Pizza was probably so good. That's a perfect, <laughs> as a best perfect mozzarella stick probably on earth. Yeah, dude, you want you definitely want a fat like a fatter person lording over a grease pit. Yeah, I wouldn't trust seasoning it with their fucking literal sweat. Oh, dude, it's coming right back out. Right in the dude, oh. we, could, we should make a stop after this. Let's go back to the. I would do that for you. True. You should be like, Can I see how fat your grease person is? <laughs> <laughs> you hear him breathing before you see him. <laughs> like the last per- the last guy died last week. You're like, damn, that pizza's probably so good up until the end, dude. <laughs> yeah, right at the end. <laughs> oh, the ultimate. When he was like, just when all of his arteries were clogged. Yeah, that's the ultimate delicacy. That's an Italian delicacy. Is it's like true. day before you die, fat pizza man pizza. It's like what was that thing in the in like a French cuisine when you like drown a pigeon and like put it your you head? Have, yeah, you have to eat under a towel to hide from God. Yeah, dude. Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Just My leave God. the bones of like the fat grill man. <laughs> yeah, working in a place like that does change you. So it's like the fog of war sets in within a couple of weeks. Yeah, I'm telling you, it, it takes away all the magic when you're around a greet like a fryer and you start like, you know, see like. Just the nasty, how much like bugs and shit he is. Dude, honestly, I feel like Little Caesars is what made me racist. Really? Working there. Because <laughs> there used to be a bus stop right outside of there. And it would close at like 930 or something. Yeah. And my buddy ran the place. So he would make, he made me the assistant manager pretty quickly just because I wasn't an absolute retard. Yeah. And I would close by myself. And at the bus stop at that time, there would be like just full of minorities and they would come in and ask for free soda all the time. And I was too much of a pussy to say no. But yeah. it became so overwhelming that I was getting done later and later because all these minorities were coming in and asking me for free Dr. Pepper. <laughs> and that's when I felt actual actual hate toward minorities. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, dude. So think about that before you judge a racist. An entire black neighborhood thought they had a cheat code for Little Caesars. Like, there's a guy who will just give you free soda. The thing is, you have to go right as they're closing. (laughs) You got to line out the door. (laughs) You had a Dr. Pepper kitchen, dude. (laughs) So when, when did you finally work up the gumption and be like, no. I did not. Dude, I quit. Fill me up with some motherfucking Mountain Dew. No, I will not <laughs> fill you up anymore. Dude, I, Matt, the syrup's low. I was getting done so late because they would all come in and I just couldn't say no to these people. So I would give everybody a free cup of soda. And there would there would be no less than 10 people getting free sodas. And when I'm shutting all the shit down by myself, like that's that's like an extra like 20 minutes where I'm putting giving them cups. And so did I was anyone to press no ice. Did anyone have the gumption to make no ice? No, nobody did. <laughs> I, I might have let an M-bomb fly at that point. <laughs> but it was getting later and later and that was a major contributor to me just like not turn back, back time <laughs> <laughs> but if you had been like sorry guys no free sodas it wouldn't have even occurred to me to say that i was that big of a fucking pussy and it just slowly built of just like, Matt, there was 
a guy socked his wife out front of the store one time, and I had my buddy Hoff, uh, who was a delivery driver. As soon as I saw him sock sock the lady, everybody's like, "Oh my god!" And I said, "Hoff, go lock that door." <laughs> I'm just so scared that the man will come in and, and turn it yeah, on me. Ask for a free soda, dude. <laughs> like, man, I'm fucking... I'm parched. I'm parched. <laughs> <laughs> I just gave her hell, dude. She was rope a me, dude. I need to <laughs> quench my thirst within 32-ounce Dr. Pepper, dude. <laughs> but, well, they're just obeying their thirst, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be mad at them. <laughs> it was the voice, dude. That was the voice of fucking God being like, Sprite. <laughs> yes. Yes, Father. Well, it's fair. I mean, that's, you know, I appreciate the honesty of coming in and being like, you know, he created bad feelings to get just, I mean, you probably must have gotten some pretty sick compliments, though. Uh, These people weren't very nice. Really? Yeah, it was maybe a thank you, like, here and there, or, like, an exclamation of excitement more than any, like, compliment or anything like that, but but it was bad, and I'm glad that story's (laughs) not there anymore. (laughs) What a, did you ever think? Just begrudgingly ever, filling sodas like here. Did you ever try to think of a way to like deter them without saying no? Like, did you ever think about learning like a sleight of hand magic trick to make them run out of the store <laughs> <laughs> and then lock them out? <laughs> Half lock that door. <laughs> Is this your soda? Oh! <laughs> Damn. So you've been working back. You've been on a road to perdition ever since. Uh, hey, every day it's an honest effort, man. True. So I, I just I just know my triggers. I just can't I just can't go to Little Caesars. I can't fill up, I can't fill up my uh, cup of a soda dispenser. You get, grab me a soda, be like, no, I can't. <laughs> you don't understand. <laughs> That's very funny. It is funny to slowly just fucking. Why are you late? Be like, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, that place was the worst. Papa John's was great though. P. John's mm-hmm. company culture is great there. Mm-hmm. Company culture. Incredible P. John's. Boss. Everybody's great. They would always like put on more people. That's than, the perfect place to go to work. after you become racist at Little Caesars. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like <laughs> racism rehab. You got a Papa John's. <laughs> they retrain you. Like they have like a full like twenty pages in the manual. Like, and here's what you do. Yeah. Someone comes in asking for free sodas. Yeah, we don't even serve them, dude. <laughs> better ingredients. Better violent crime statistics. Better pizza. <laughs> Man, that's a hoot. That's pretty funny. Um, did, did you work fast food before? No, just one pizza place and like a couple sh- like shitty restaurants. Mm. But I never did a fast. F- no, I never did fast food. Um, no, I couldn't do it. My shittiest job by far was a fucking pool company. Burn it down, dude. Yeah, true. <laughs> it's the mo- it's the scariest woods. It's the scariest woods ever. Yeah, it's- loud, <sighs> louder than hell. You're trying to get some shut eye in the jungle. Yeah, dude. You this is a podcast. This is we're breaking now down geopolitics, dude. We're breaking down how loud the fucking woods are. <laughs> <laughs> you part, you're like just hot. You're like I'm gonna get so paid off all these trees, and you come across like people who have been in there for like five hundred thousand years. You're like, shit. Uh, I'm not gonna tell anybody you guys shit. existed. Shit. Yeah. No, you gotta mow them down. <laughs> <laughs> like they never existed. <laughs> just that big spiked just, fucking paver. Yeah. Be like, just get out of the way. I mean, dude, Move. imagine. But come on, guys, you got it. You got Move. five seconds. Yeah. You're going to love our shit. Yeah, come check out Rio. We have walls. Check <laughs> out walls. We you get a kick out of fucking walls. Yeah, man. The uh, I haven't got to Brazil yet, but he, the Polish one, I was like, damn. Me- dude, I, I hope we don't fight Mexico, dude. I'm, we won't fight the last, dude. Is, dude. There's too much. There's going to be too much crossover. We're boys. Well, dude, that that's his whole point. It's like. Nobody would have predicted so many of the things of World War One, World War Two seem unpredictable. So he's like, whenever you're making f- big, t- long term predictions, he's like, you're gonna throw, you gotta like throw. What? Some- what does he mean was unpredictable? I think back then they didn't think America would become a superpower. Like way back in like the 1700s, well, like, was- Europe was laughing. No, at that's America. the dude. Then they saw what we did in the Civil War, and they were like, Yeah, yo. So what? What was the one that America lost to England for? Was that the War of 1812? 12, yeah. So we lost that. Yeah, and then we came back. Big but they, that was like a that doesn't even count, dude. War of eighteen twelve. It was bull. Count. It was yeah. BS. Because he was crap. talking about there was the Louisiana Purchase, but then we had to fight England to actually get that land that we yeah. bought. That we bought fair and square. Fair and square. <laughs> fair and square. France was in a no hole. Back. France was in a hole. We were like, yeah, we'll buy that shit. <laughs> <laughs> France was pawning shit. <laughs> but no take backs. No take backs. But apparently, sure. we had to fight a war to actually claim the land. Oh. Uh, I'm That's, not sure. You said there's like one of those stupid little micro wars everyone just glosses over. Wasn't the Louisiana Purchase like 1807? I think so. It might have been Big Jack. No, he was 
Andrew Jackson. The Battle of New Orleans. He it's, fought in New Orleans. It was the Battle of New yeah. Orleans gave us access to the land. Yeah, he, he right fought the there. Yes. But yeah, dude, it's pretty sick. It was that was that was eighteen fourteen. Was that the Battle of New Orleans? He had like a couple hundred casualties. The Redcoats had like thousands. Of dude, let's go. Back then, if you would give me in eighteen fourteen, we took a little trip <laughs> along with Colonel Jackson down the mighty Mississippi. <laughs> we took a little bacon and we took a little beans and we fought the bloody British in the town of New Orleans. Well, we fired our guns, but the British kept on coming. There wasn't as many as there was a while ago. Fired once more, and they began to run it down the Mississippi to the Gulf of Mexico. Damn, come dude. on, dude! Oh, you're in the alehouse, dude. Just fucking yes. lifting your frosty. Hurrah! Tin mug. Hurrah! I've said it before, dude. We dudes need to be able to get together and just join and Victoria's Song. That's one thing that the British do have. The Damn. British and the Irish have that. They still do that. They get fucked up in pubs and sing together. We got to do it. It's good for your health. It's good for us to sing. It's literally. I'm telling you, I'm very close to joining a choir. Ooh, it's good for your health. You weren't kidding about that fucking feminine energy, dude. Why? What's wrong with the choir? You're gonna join a choir, dude? That's masculine as hell. What are you gonna sing? Oh, happy day! No, I was oh, just. Oh, happy day! He did. No, Jesus dude, they did studies with people with cortisol Jesus levels and blood pressure, and they measure your cortisol when you come out of a choir sesh. Plummets. There's something about getting together with people and singing. It's good for your health. Yeah, you're gay, and it's fun. What? Yeah, what were they checking? How fucking happy everybody was. It's good for you, dude. Finally, I can sing with the guys <laughs> about God. Yes, dude. Raise, exalt his glory. No, you need to get a couple pints and sing <laughs> about the fucking. <laughs> exalt his glory. You gotta sing together. Dude. That works the same thing. No, that's. No, if you need dude, to start going to. You go to Fishtown, start I'll try. singing MLS fight songs. I'll try. Yeah. Or just start, like, sing something about, like, you know, just something we did that's, like, victorious and ties us all together. We In went. this neighborhood used to be dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Huzzah! Huzzah! <laughs> and now the property. <laughs> fish, I was saying about Fishtown, that was white people. They yes. displaced. That was Fishtown white hipsters. Fishtown was hockey. That are big Antifa now. But sure. I'm saying they, they displaced whites. Fishtown was poor tough, whites. poor whites. Yes. And that was... The, <laughs> and now I they've used, been displaced I used by to rich work kids. With the, I used to work with a guy who exclusively his words, not mine. When he talks about the, the white dudes who moved into his neighborhood, he just blanketly refers to them as the faggots. <laughs> that's, that's his I'll words. be honest. That's those his are his words. Are his words. <laughs> but he see, I think he's spot on. Dude. <laughs> he's like just some dude with some fucking like kind of chubby white dude with a beard with like a gritty, <laughs> a gritty tattoo. Yeah. Just like, sorry, his, fascists aren't welcome here. He goes to his corner bar and he's they've been coming in and he just. Doesn't matter your sexual orientation. He's like, you know, our bar, you know, the faggots started coming to our bar. That's how he, we'd be painting a house. And he'd just be like, yeah, ever since, you know. That's a major problem. <laughs> but they're, because they're, they're probably in the bar being like, huzzah, and we moved in. They're in there. And I bought this place for 70 grand. Yeah. Now it's worth 300,000. Yes. My dad helped me with that purchase. <laughs> My dad knows about carpentry and he did now it all I'm for free. I'm a communist. <laughs> <laughs> it's so sick to become a fat pussy communist. I know, I know. Jesus Christ, dude. I was thinking about that. But how- you know what also is gay is dudes being becoming right wing guys. Yeah. That's it also stinks. very gay. It's barbaric, dude. It is cooler than being a fat communist. It's preferable, yes. It's preferable of the two evils. Yes, it's a lesser. <laughs> it's a lesser for sure. It's a lesser. So we side with fascism. <laughs> we tolerate no, not the fascists. We tolerate them for geopolitics. Hell no, the fascists. We tolerate no, it's they're, they're also libertarians. I mean, Shane, I'm going to get real deep on you. I mean, you can't control the Internet and all of a sudden call other people fascist. That's a meme I saw on Instagram. <laughs> you want to shut down the Internet like and that. call them fascists? That's fascism, brother. Yeah, dude, we need to get, we need to start going down to the communist fat bars and start really <laughs> fucking cracking skulls. Dude. That's what I'm training for right now. For I'm sure. doing box steps so that for I can sure. find Two weeks of box steps, I'll be in better shape than the Just fucking holding a trash can later. MLS like, charge. Fan, MLS fans, cigarette smoking, fucking cool, depressed dude. Yeah, I'd like to punch them in the belly. They're decadence, dude. They are. They, they're fucking decadent. Like, what's the point? What's even real? Who it's cares? All fucking lame. It's all bullshit. No, dude. Football rules. Yeah, we're bringing in civilization. Football rules. They need to know that. Oh yeah, Joe they Burrow's think. cool. Joe Cool needs to die, dude. Not like figuratively, bro. I'm talking about. Oh, being cool. Joe, cool, yeah. Joe, cool, the guy. He, we're talking about Joe Burrow. 
Oh, what's that? His nickname. Oh, no, no, I'm not talking about I, I mean, don't want to kill It's Joe, Montana, it's Joe Montana's nickname. This is a little sacrilege. There's, they call him Joe Cool, too, now? They're just saying he's cool. Everybody's agreeing he's no, I'm cool. No, I'm not saying we should kill the quarterback of the Bengals. The Bengals? The Bengals, yeah. <laughs> I almost called them the Bengal Tigers. They should kill the, the quarterback Bengal of the Tigers. Bengal Tigers. <laughs> You're cheering for the Cincinnati Bengal Tigers. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, dude, that needs to stop right now. That whole like America's. It's like no, dude. We need to be like, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna fucking bomb. Like third, we need our third. Oh, well, we need the Pakistan. We need the Pakistan. Oh, dude. Pakistan is in the bag. <laughs> Pakistan is in the bag. But yeah, man, people need to realize, dude. A lot of people, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, dude. Yeah, for you to sit. Dude, in the you bar need to start get... asking not what your country can do for you. So I'm but saying, what dude, you can do for your country. That's what I'm saying. Maybe stop. And this is what we do for our country. Yeah, dude. We get on the podcast, dude. Brittany hit me you with tell goofs. Brittany hit me with that shit when Maya was born. She's like, you went the next day and did a podcast. I'm like, dude, Winston Churchill couldn't take sick days to take a day off. It's just the same thing. Exactly the same. This thing. is the same thing. <laughs> Although, even though up the raw, dude, fuck Winston Churchill. Yeah, what was his deal? What, Churchill? Yeah. You would have liked what he did. He fired he tried to, In World War One. he tried to go at those Ottomans, dude, and he found out. Did he really? Yeah, he sent the boys into a... Don't sleep on Turkey, dude. Tur- Turks according, got him. According to this book, Turkey's coming back. And he did call in 2009. He, I mean, I don't... Again, I forget exactly what was happening. I think that was... Yeah, that was like Obama just got elected. So that was like the height of like a lot of the... Turkey's having a tough time right now. They have... What's his name in... Uh, he just came, yeah. That guy's beefing with like they're dealing with the press. He just attacked. He's the press. having a tough time. Yeah, the Turkish he, leader just came at the press and was fuck. like, "Yo, stop with that anti-Turkey bullshit, dude." His name is uh, Ar- Ar- Aragon. Yeah, apparently yeah. I, I I looked up Turkey news to see if they were killing it to see if this guy was right, and I I saw that they're having a bit of a squabble they're having, right now. Yeah, bit of a tough time, but. <laughs> That's got to stink, especially if, dude, especially if you're like a full totalitarian country and like the internet starts coming. That's like, God damn it. Yeah, dude. Why are you guys stinks. telling everybody what we're doing? It fucking stinks. But you know what? Another thing that guy might not predict, who knows about how the, the reliance on oil is going to go. Mm-hmm. Although I think that's probably going to be around for at least 100 he, years. He was saying we're going to go. 100 tough to predict. Dude. Well, he said we're going to get uh, out like space generated energy. So we're going to yeah, have like, like solar panels. He's like solar panels on the land. It's too much. It's too clunky. It's kind of shitty. He's like, but we're going to go out and set him up on the moon. We're going to start harnessing Wi-Fi energy. the energy back. He said uh, radio, radio act, radio waves or something. I'd yeah, like to get some radioactive bullshit basically flying some, around. Some kind of waves. We're going to send energy back in wave form. Yeah. And just harness energy from outer space. And it's not going to be a thing. Problem's going to be the population dip. That's going to be the issue. Sean, what are we at time wise? That's we're a goddamn great. good episode. Dude. We The population dip is going to be tight. Yeah. It's going to be great. It's not Labor, bad. Money's going to, uh, workers are going to get paid more. Yeah. And then we're going to start being like, we're going to start like enticing immigrants to come here. The country's going to be so nasty when we go, come on guys, that that's going to, all the fat pussies in the bar are going to get, excuse me. Yeah. All the dudes from like Dagestan and big up, excuse me. Can I oh, get a beer? Hey, me. Excuse me. Ew, step. Yeah. But they'll oh, be so rich by then. The Dagestanis be, coming in and bulldogging them. It's going to be sick. We need, we need fresh blood, dude. The fat pussies are going to be like, actually, you can't. There's going to be like 40 Dagestanis. Like, what? Like, never mind, sir. Nothing. Uh, you guys comment. We fucking hate communism, dude. We're from fucking Dagestan. True. They're going to be like, oh, I'm sorry. Shh. Shane, where can we catch you? Guys. <laughs> Shane, where can the people catch you? Guys. We should do those up front, dude. We gotta- I know. I know. I mean, I love the art form, but I also love business. Nah, we don't need to do that. We'll do no, it. No, uh, fuck it. 17th and 18th and 19th and 20th. You guys could come see me. Just kidding. You can't. It's all sold out. <laughs> no, actually, we added another show Ooh. Sunday, the 20th, uh, in Providence, Rhode Island, February 20th. February 24th, 25th, 26th. You can catch me and Matt McCusker at Wise Guys in Salt Lake City. Yes. Uh, March 3rd, 4th, and 5th. I'll be at Levity Live in New York, March 18th and 19th. This is a big one. The Comedy Works in Denver, 18th, 19th, oh, and 20th. That'll be sick. And I heard a little birdie tell me John McKeever was going to feature for me that weekend. Ooh, so that'll be a fun one. That'll be nice. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited about that. That'll be sick as hell. That bird happened to be John McKeever? I asked. <laughs> I sent a bird to John, and he responded. That's sick. That's sick. <laughs> and the, bird, the bird then told me. <laughs> Dude, that's what's up. The uh, that'll be really fun. Get the McKeevies on some edibles. It's be a blast. Get them some edibles, dude. It's gonna be a damn blast. That'll be fun as hell. That'll be a fun boy to get on the road. Colorado. 
the uh, February 4th, I'll be in Indianapolis. I'll be in the 5th as mm. well. The 4th, the 1030 show. It's getting scarce, dude. It's getting scarce. It's getting scarce. I think there's like five little five little spots left to get them. Um, When's also, bananas? Bananas is the big one. Yeah, you know, Indianapolis. Let's talk whatever, let's, whatever about deal. Indianapolis. This yeah, is true. bananas. Bananas is, is the sale. True. You're absolutely right. Friday, April 29th. And Saturday, April 30th, I'll be at Bananas Comedy That's Club. That's the fucking big dog. In Rutherford, New Jersey. Rutherford. Basically New York. It's basically the big city. Rutherford. Rutherford. East Rutherford, New York. East Rutherford. <laughs> I'll be scouting out highly Indian areas where I'm going to move. You know what you'll family. be right next to? You'll be right next to the Bada Bing for what? the Sopranos. I hit, me and Gardini got stuck in that fucking godforsaken area in Newark, and I was hitting him with, woke up this morning. Yeah. It's just nothing but, like, cranes and shitty things. It is crap. Woke up this morning. <laughs> Dude, that, yeah, that's... It was. Now it's crap. It's crap. I was telling him, I'm New like... New Jersey's crap. I would have been doing heroin. I would have collapsed on a fucking pile of cinder blocks if I lived in Newark, dude, <laughs> after going through that shit. I was like, it's this. You would have been in a starter jacket. <laughs> oh, dude. In rubble. Just... <laughs> I almost did. I was looking for heroin on the way out. I was like, fuck it. I'm going to get some heroin. That would be sick, dude. All right. Thank you for listening to our podcast, everybody. Have a good evening. Ready, go. What the fuck, Sean? <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Long, dude. What's Whoa. up? In the building, dude. We got a... Uh, <laughs> you know what? Actually, I just got... Uh, I was on the, the dip pods that you told me to get on, and then yeah. I had to quit those because they yeah. were taking over my life. These... these Two yeah. cigarettes per pot, he tells me. Yeah, they really? are. They're, they're too much. I'm addicted to them. The He's all addicted to Nick. Lucy's. <laughs> and it's a weird Lucy's one. Throw it out there. I'm also getting addicted to I'm podcast sponsors. Dude. <laughs> I'm laughing at that Kratom guy. You're just like substance, dude. I'm sitting here addicted to these substances. I'm shilling out to the fucking people. <laughs> now I'm addicted. Are you addicted to Lu- what are, you, are you addicted to Lucy's? Yeah, they're good. They'll come out with a new product to help everyone get off Lucy's. That'll be yeah, nice. Yeah, hey, guys, are you that. addicted? Are you addicted to the shit we gave you? No, they got you constantly on the run right now. The what? From one thing to another, yeah. you go from cigarettes to vapes to true. Then you go back on cigarettes, then you go back on the pods, which is two, two cigarettes. Good for Philip Morris, so though, just sticking with it. Yeah. Everyone's like, that play, that's <laughs> fucking evil, dude. Dude, and then eventually they're like, get, no, no, Lucy rules. We're not disparaging for, for, for our sponsor. What's Lucy? It's our sponsor, dude. Because I, I was thought you were talking about a Lucy cigarette, like what six no. nine was ratting on people. No, for. that's illegal, dude. <laughs> yeah, we never illegal. sponsor illegal sale of cigarettes. There's one guy that sells Lucy's in my neighborhood, but he. He literally fingers them all up with his hands. Oh, God. And, and I asked him twice, I go, hey, if you're going to give me cigarettes, can you touch it with not the filter? <laughs> Keeps handing to Oh, you you're his- mad at the guy selling Lucy's? <laughs> <laughs> you're complaining about service? Like, be careful. Fucking- you be careful, though. That's a filter. risky business. <laughs> Lucy's? Sale of Lucy's, yeah. Selling Lucy's in New York will get you fucking strangled yeah, to death by up, the yeah. cops, dude. <laughs> yeah, too God, fucked up. <laughs> you got the death penalty for that. <laughs> he did. These guys don't care. They have the they have a lighter attached to the thing ready to go. You light it in the oh, store. Oh, they light it for you? Oh, oh, they don't that's, care. Kind of, that's actually kind of nice. You live in Brooklyn? It's great. No, this is uh, East Village. Oh, nice. Uh, he's got the lighter. Yeah, yeah. Most like you'll be just normal people coming in to buy the paper, and some guys, you know, lighting a cigarette on the, on the string. It's kind of gentlemanly, though. It is. If I were, if I owned a convenience store, I would just like sell that guy cigarettes, make like, yo sell Lucy's outside, and light everyone when they come out, give them a little light. It's very. That's a nice touch. It is a nice touch. The funny part is, most people that buy the Lucy's, they buy two or three, and they keep it in the same pack, so they always have one pack of cigarettes. They just like refill it three at a time. <laughs> kind of nice. Nice little racket they got going on. What the fuck was that? Yeah, I, uh, I'm glad I never got addicted to nicotine. Very happy. It's nice. I'm telling you, I might start. I might get into it. 
It is funny that people go back to cigarettes. I think it's more of a getting into in your 30s thing now. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think so too. That's Why when I started doing coke. 30s. Once I hit my 30s, I was like, it's time for me to invest in stride. doing cocaine. See how that does. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a that's not. I guess that's not a bad one. The wait at least. Wait, wait you're at least you're more mature. Wait until my heart's mature. <laughs> yeah, get your heart. Nice get and my mature. get very overweight, and then it's like, all right, now it's time. Frontal <laughs> cortex is formed of your heart. Yes, now yeah, it's time. It's, it's a bad one to get caught up on. Cocaine. Yeah, yeah, it's a rough one. It's a bad one, especially Almost. when it completely takes a hold of a per, like takes a hold of a person. It <laughs> fucking stinks. <laughs> takes a hold of girls hard too. Oh girls. man, girls yeah, get does. rocked by <laughs> cocaine. Dude, it kill, it's everything they need. It's perfect. It really They're like is. I don't eat anything. They don't eat. I've I've seen girls like go gray in complexion from coke. They get beezed up. They get, they get beezed. Our buddy Six, you know Brian Six, yeah. anytime he gets on drugs, his face just goes gray. <laughs> he loses all blood. It was a vamp. It's, it's fucking crazy. He's sort of a red guy to begin with, too. He right? is red. And then he'll just come into a room and you'll be like, oh, fuck, dude, what happened? He's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> oh. Yeah, dude, that's a... Uh... Girl, it fuck, girls, first of all, love Coke. Adderall is girls. Now that's, they're all That's Addy their, up. like, they all went back to, like, 1950s when we used to give housewives, like, remember that? We used to give <laughs> Dude, housewives, like, Adderall Valium and design, fucking It's meth. perfect for ladies. They just clean and don't eat. They can get a mean though. They, you just they get a get, perfect, and then they get a little nasty. They get dude. cranky, dude. They run the out of their are, Adderall, and then they they stop cleaning and they start munching and they sit there, dude. <laughs> start munching. <laughs> they start fucking yeah. munching and they start and, yapping at you. I can tell yeah. too. I remember dating a girl that she was, and they'd always be like, "I'm not." And I go, "Listen, I don't care. We're not even that like yeah. in a relationship yet." And she goes, "I never did." Blah blah. And you go, "Is a visibly different person." <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you go, you, <laughs> two completely different people. Yeah. Yeah, I like when people try to hide their drugs. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Like my sister was trying to hide that she was on heroin. It was so funny. Wow. Yeah, that's a tough she one. She was just like... Yeah. <laughs> You'd be like, yo, what are you doing? The best like, is hiding it from what? people who don't care. Yeah, you go, I'm not your girlfriend. Yeah. You want to do coke, do coke, yeah. dude. I don't care. Dude, the best... My friend would do... Oh, I think it, I, at the time, I think it was heroin, but he would like have one beer and be like... <sighs> yeah, He'd be it. like, dude, I'm just tired, man. Yeah. I'm like... <laughs> Dude, that, that cruise light took me down. <laughs> that's that's when we that's when we realized my sister was doing it because she it was at a Christmas party and she had like two glasses of wine. Yeah, and then we went to Sheets. And when we were driving, my sister, my other sister was driving, came up to a red light, and my sister was sitting shotgun and had nodded off, just <laughs> smacked her head on the dash. Oh. And we were like, "What?" She's like, "I'm just tired from the wine." We're yeah. like, "You had one glass, dude." Yeah. Something else. You're on heroin. On. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretty the, fun. That'd be nice for the Christmas party. Imagine like a nice sweater. Holy fuck, dude. Christmas lights just sitting there with all your family. You're on heroin. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I give her credit. I mean, she stopped doing it. So yeah, that's just, that's a good run. I was telling Sean, my brief my brief run with opiates, I, I weren't for me, but I remember it's like. What did you do? Uh... I was just selling perks, so like I just, my one friend was oh. like, "Dude, you have to try these things." One for you, one for me. Yeah, I, t- I took like a fifteen milligram Rocket set or something, and then I took a ten milligram Percocet, and then I drank syrup, and mm. I was like, I was pretty fucked up. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I was laying on a futon, just like floating in that my seems... body. It's pretty nuts. Straight up cough syrup, or is there some? It's pro meth. It's pro meth. I was I was slanging that syrup. What's that? What does that mean? I'm picturing Pro-meth is, like pro meth is a purple drink. But not just it's not, not, not a regulation like you have to get it from a guy. So <laughs> no, it, it was prescription. Sipping nah, Nyquil. Right. I was sipping syrup. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't DXM. <laughs> I wasn't robo tripping. This was syrup. This was pancakes and syrup. I had Real the motherfucking pills. I had the motherfucking pills. I had the motherfucking syrup. I was. A you ever do any of those drugs? Uh, did the, what, uh, the oxy's I probably did a lot of, and I didn't Jesus. like. Probably <laughs> did. What the fuck, man? I probably I was being did. a gentleman eating Percocets. Oxy's straight are pink up, stuff. and I got them from. I probably uh, did a lot of oxy's. <laughs> I I had a probably a, a, a bunch of like broken noses and stuff, and I kept getting prescribed oxy. So at one point, I had a ton or oxy of cotton. Them. Was it oxycodone or oxycodone? Well, which one did they give you for that? Like for a broken stuff? nose, not oxycotton. Okay, it's oxycodone. Okay, they're the same thing. Oxycotton is oxycodone, but it's like eighty milligrams. But I was kind of liking them, but I was tweaking. I remember I one time. I, like, <laughs> I don't like them now, though. I think people love them. Dude, I used to, I was, at that one point, I was, I did like three days in a row. I would get up in the middle of the night and then I'll be kind of still tweaking on them. And then I would go to my computer. I go, I got to send this email to the guy. You know, they're going to get me and blah, blah. And I'm like, hey, I got to, got to shoot this off before I get to back to bed. I go, I can't find this guy's contact. And then I would kind of be like, what contact? What guy? <laughs> Who am I sending Maybe they were giving you oxycodone. No. I go, I don't even have a job. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, they, it gets you friggin' tweaked. That's yeah, terrible. 
I've heard I've heard opiates make people angry. I know. I know. I'll tell work. you that, dude. First hand experience, dude. I had a grumpy sister. Yeah, dude. <laughs> she she was grumpy? such a fucking grump. Isn't dude. that just when she doesn't have it though? No, you get if you take if you're on opiates. My one friend said Viking Viking in specifically, he would take Vikes and then just be like pissed. <laughs> he'd, be like, he'd be at work. Just like, this for? He'd just be at work and just be like, just be like, fuck, dude. He'd be a, he'd be a dickhead. He's like, sorry, man. These Vikes make me fucking mean. <laughs> Stop taking them. Dude. He couldn't. God, that sucks. Yeah, yeah. Cause that's what happened. Once, once you get like fully addicted, you're just you, you're miserable. Yeah, yeah. Man, what other you're like thing taking I... it to not be sick, and then you're just mad the whole time. Yeah, uh, let me get my voice. coffee so I can get grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't talk to me after I had my coffee or before. Or you have to constantly <laughs> interact with pill dealers too. Uh, so shitty. It's nothing worse than hanging out with dudes who sell opiates. They are the biggest pieces of. I'm saying this, including myself, back in the day. It's you, just the. Were you biggest, a jerk? I was. A, I used to sell Suboxone and Oxycontin. So if when they people try to get off Oxycontin, I'd be like, "Well, here's some boxes," and I would sell those. Damn, you probably <laughs> killed a couple of people. Yeah, dude. <laughs> well, <laughs> people, probably... would, people would sell you Suboxins to try to get oxys. So I'd be like, "I'll trade, they're, dude." They're they're pretty. You, like the organs. They're trail. at your mercy. It's a buyer's That's market. That's a hustle. <laughs> oh, dude, dudes, dudes. Then dudes would take Suboxins just to get fucked up. If they if they like were off them for a while, like I'll just take a sub and get fucked up. It's the craziest shit. <laughs> dudes would smuggle methadone out in their mouth and spit it out and yeah, sell it. Yeah. It's crazy. Methadone's fun. The opiate thing is the most fucked up. It's fun to see. Methadone? Watching people crush methadone. Yeah, because you can take methadone you get and a Xanax. wrecked from methadone, dude. Well, dude, if you take yeah. meth and a Xanax, or methadone and a Xanax, it's like being on heroin. They figured that out down at the clinics, and all of them were like, <laughs> but if you're, yeah, if you're that guy, we're back, we, boys. I think we're you back. just switched to heroin at that point. <laughs> I think that, yeah, you stopped going to. Well, the that clinic. way you can. Pe- I guess you're right. Yeah. <laughs> you're getting you're off right. heroin, but you found the perfect combination. But of it's free. Heroin again. It's free though. You get the free. You get the free methadone. And you just score a Xanax script. And you're, the party's on, dude. The party's yeah. back fucking you're, on. It's back to the party, dude. <laughs> you're with all your boys at the clinic, dude. You're like a... <laughs> <laughs> you're like the, the fucking fun. NSYNC marionettes, <laughs> dude. Just... <laughs> That's nice. Yes, I wish and... we got... We should get into that. If pills? She, yeah. We could probably... We yeah, could, we could, we we could get addicted said... to m- pills and then run the podcast for like one or two more oh, years. that'd be so good. And just... F- fucking drive this thing straight in the ground it'd be so good dude. and then you'd have a whole you know press tour about how we're back and we're getting we're back. Off, you know found and it would god never be you could find god <laughs> it would never be that good ever again nothing would be as good as watching no but it a wasn't podcast. supposed to be good it's inspirational at that point watching a podcast deteriorate the drugs would be very fun <laughs> be awesome man it's, oh, we'll see we'll know? see i'll keep my eye on the numbers if they start slipping it's time to start calling people like you're <laughs> it's more believable at this age when the you know the 20 year old has got the drug problem is a big eye roll for me the what 20 year old with the drug problem like in college the guy that had to go to rehab for coke you go yeah that's that's yeah that's kind of that's yeah. bullshit it's like dude come on yeah there's a bunch of there's people that are like i was brain. i was an alcoholic and it's like when <laughs> Yeah, like when I was nineteen. There's a lot like, of comics that's that. They oh go, my I've god, been off, I've been off uh, alcohol. I'm 30 years sober. Yeah. I'm 50. You go so you <laughs> yeah. drank a few times when you're yeah. 20, and you were a hassle. I saw a couple <laughs> comics. I saw a couple comics battle a uh, craft beer addiction. Oh, like, yeah. I'm an alcoholic. I'm like, bro, I've only ever seen you drink like IPAs. <laughs> yeah. You're not an alcoholic. Sorry. Yeah, I was. <laughs> My addiction, dude, to fucking... I might have to check into rehab for Bud Lights. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to fucking Guinness. Yeah, it was crazy. No, you got to check into Fat Camp if you're getting too into the, the IPAs. Yeah, the IPAs <laughs> will get you. That happened, dude, to the whole alt scene. <laughs> they, the alt scene... You they grow all a got beard, fat yeah. as shit. That's what happened. Yeah, they got craft beers, dude. They did. They, they got hit craft. with the IPAs. And then now they all have beards and, they were and sweaters. Yeah, you get wide hips and a soft dick, dude. They got dude. jolly. <laughs> <laughs> Very jolly alt scene. Stop liking your, your girlfriend doesn't look as pretty i think ipas make you kind of gay definitely i think you get like wide hips or you start producing estrogen your dick stops working you're like why am i hanging out why do i live with my girlfriend yeah just hang out with my alt buddies and dude. they just pretend girls are funny <laughs> for 15 years you're like i think she's hilarious <laughs> fuck you or it actually works you're like 10 beers drink drink deep you're like that's actually pretty funny you go what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> all right i got me off bartender <laughs> You wake up to your Patreon, so you're like, Jesus Christ. That dude. is what happened, dude. dude I subscribe to the Call Her Daddy offshoots. <laughs> oh, goddamn. That is exactly what happened to the alt scene. Oh, yeah. In Philadelphia, at least. Yeah, they got, I'm they sure hit. it was nationwide. <laughs> it was an epidemic. The, the craft Trump beers Trump, hit. Trump let him Trump, Trump broke all of them, and they're all <laughs> fat bitches, dude, just sitting there like, this is not okay. 
<laughs> I got something that'll uh, ease your tensions. Here, have yeah. a sip. <laughs> oh, yeah. IPAs, dude. The local communist lodge. That fucking destroyed <laughs> communism. <laughs> IABVs fucking... <laughs> Oh. True. Another thing called yeah, that fucked him up. It fucked up the comrades. I think, Commun- was, I think the CIA potatoes. did that. The CIA gave the Altine craft beers <laughs> to disrupt the communists. A couple of them got a little handsy. They did get handsy. A couple, handy. couple IPAs <laughs> start touching people. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, they did get handsy. They did, dude. They kept getting. It the was sex like, pest got handsy. They you guys, <laughs> fucking grabbed the ladies' crotch. They, they kept. They came out so hard against all that stuff, and then it just like one after the other. Like, oh, this improv guy grabbed my ass. Yeah, this all, dude. They they constantly got busted. I mean, there was sh- a guy in the Toronto scene that got busted for being like a legit child pedophile trafficker. <laughs> Whoa, yeah, dude. He was he was like doing child porn. Dude, Drake. Uh, yeah. This guy's name is Joe Kai, I think. Yeah. yeah, he was. I won't say his last name, but he. he uh, so basically, when all this stuff was happening, then people started posting like, "Yo, did this guy get busted for child porn?" And then the people in the Facebook group took it down because they wanted to give him a fair shake because he was like one of their boys. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it came out. This was like on the news, right? And then it's. Oh, and he was fuck. straight up going to meet people to buy hard drives and stuff. Oh. That's a dark. You was know, he a middleman alley- or was he just like? Was he? Sell- Selling some of it, or it was all head stash? I think he's more. This is personal. <laughs> and uh, my body, who is his uh, uncle, was a cop or whatever. Because you, you, when you hear about someone get first time, you go, oh, "Who? That could be an accident. A file ends up on your computer. I don't know. Whatever." <laughs> Dude, nobody buys <laughs> files. No, no, no. Nice, but all you nice hear story. is like this guy. This I go. Oh, that could have been some girl. He had a photo of a girl. Like I don't know exactly what it means. Sure, right? it's fair. Then, it's fair. but then my body was like, no, no, no. If you get busted for child porn, they've been watching you for a year. Yeah, he goes, they've been they've been checking on your computer. That there's no the Mounties. Well, because they know it ruins your life. The Mounties are in there. Just... <laughs> He's talking to children, hey. <laughs> they do the undercover sting. The dude is wearing like a fucking nutcracker hat. <laughs> That's what it is. They, go, they know. They're, was he funny? No, not really. No, they, that'd they, be hilarious. They, they know that they funny. ruin so your good. life if they put the accusation out there. So apparently they're a little bit sparing with it. Wow, that's nice. That's nice to, yeah. Yeah, if cops are so bad. Yeah. yeah, if you toss out child porn accusation, like, because then you go out, you oh, that's the child porn guy. You go misunderstanding, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> everyone go okay. Oh, yeah, that's on you forever. That's a stink. Yeah, they do. They do pile up the evidence on you. They kind of they don't like. I only heard of one person who. It's because they're the bros, dude. They're like, dude. I look at porn every day. Anyone get caught in the crossfire? Take crossfire. it easy. <laughs> Let's not toss this out willy nilly. I know a guy in my college who got in trouble. He, I think he was eighteen, freshman year. And apparently his dorm got raided because he downloaded that one fabled like seventeen year old girl gives hand job. He clicked it and apparently they busted into his room. <laughs> <Immediately>. oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he claims. He might have just been downloading tons of child porn. Definitely. I used to sell that guy tons of perks. <laughs> yeah, dude. You want perks? What's better than that, dude? Now it's time to fire up some CP. <laughs> You're burning your fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Napster was full of that stuff. Like, kids was it? Dick while dad watches. Like, whenever you type in just porn, oh, man. It, would, it would list off like the wildest shit. Oh, dude, Napster. But it, would, no, some... it, would, it wouldn't be that. Like, yeah. um, you know, it would probably be like a Dane Cook video, is what yeah. it would actually be. <laughs> Oh, That'd man. be nice if they came. If those people came in and kicked in your door for the seven, the fabled seventeen year old girl gives hand job, and you're like, actually, it's Dane Cook. It's just Dane <laughs> Cook. <laughs> it's always Dane Cook. Napster days. It was always Dane Cook. He and was king. Gather around and watch with you. It's it's pretty good. This is hilarious. There's a guy spitting water right now. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> he, that was the funniest thing back then. Yeah, I saw Dane Cook when I was in college, and I was like, this is the he was funniest he thing was I've incredible. Seen. Yeah, no, it's what are the hand signals? That's it. I, mean, I can't do it. I thought he was giving you guys a no, for 10 minutes to keep it rolling. The, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Let's wrap this thing up. Keep cooking. <laughs> That'd be nice. A nice 10 minute earn. Just, like, just sitting on perks. And, and we're off, boys. <laughs> trying so hard to move your arms to get to the CP. Yeah. <laughs> just like. <laughs> well, uh, the, the, perks, <laughs> the perks are pretty fluid on them. They just give you perk head eyes. So you're just kind of like. All the time, your eyes are like squishy. You're like, what's up, bro? Dude, it's my, so my buddy funny. would do perks or Vicodin, whichever one just makes you sweat and lay there. Both? Yeah. He would come <laughs> in and just sit. I'd be playing video games. He would just sit next to me, just 
Sweaty, just drenched. It's a sweaty drug for sure. <laughs> that yeah. sucks. Yeah, the Vikes people complain. The Vikes people said aren't strong enough. The perks are the, the preferred. I had a good mushroom racket at Guelph University where I was selling pretty good, pa- oh. like pretty good amounts of mushrooms. That's nice. And then I had like maybe the worst mushroom trip of all time, and I got out of the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, when, you have, my hat. when you have tons of mushrooms and then you're like taking them, you're selling mushrooms. Heavy. Yeah, I took a quarter ounce that way when I was 19, being like, I, I just grabbed a handful the one time. I was like, that was fun. And I took two handfuls. I'm like, this will be twice as much fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lost Turns my out fucking mind. <laughs> Dude, I like walked out of my house and was just in the hood and was just like, this is so fucking scary. I'm dead meat. <laughs> and I just ran back to my house and was like, ah. Yeah, yeah, I locked myself in my res room and I wouldn't come out. <laughs> You're in college. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you wore the plug. Go, you were leave the plug. me alone. Just let me die. <laughs> the, Canadian, the Canadian plug. <laughs> He's locked in his room like, this isn't cool, guys. <laughs> it's not that far. Uh. This is the public service announcement. The Wild Wild West. Well, this is this is a big one. Special edition. It's a special edition. Normally we're goofing around. Yeah, we're I've never been more ashamed to let somebody into our studio. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as he came in, I was like a lady. I was like, well, sorry, it's so messy in here. <laughs> uh, we're here with Nick Bryant. He's the author of uh, The Franklin Scandal and Confessions of a Madam. Yes, Confessions DC of a DC Madam. Madam. Confessions of a DC, DC Madam. Madam. The politics of sex lies in blackmail. Yes. Goddamn. Uh, oh, pull that yeah, mic up. Nick, you speak a little more into the mic. Um, so what you were just saying is how you got involved in, in the Franklin scheme at the very beginning. So let's, yeah, let's well, jump right I, in. I, yeah. I was talking to an editor at Rolling Stone and he said, pitch me dark stories. And, I, you know, I said, just kind of throwing my hands up in there. So, well, I mean, what do you want? Do you want a story on Nazis? Do you want a story on Satanists? I mean, wh- what do you want? And he goes, Satanists. That sounds good. So I, I started this whole odyssey, this very dark odyssey. I was talking to Satanists, um, and they struck me as they, – they didn't strike me as very ethical people. I'm yeah. um, actually quite unctuous. And um, I felt like I had to wash my hands, you know, after I hung out with them. Yeah. But anyway, so – and then I was trolling the internet looking for – Subject matter. I mean, when you're going to write something, you try to get as much information as you can and then distill it. And then I came across a cult called the Finders that had been busted by the U.S. Customs for trafficking children. They had six kids in Tallahassee, Arizona, and some concerned citizens called uh, Tallahassee Police Department and the Tallahassee Police Department arrested the two Finders and put the six kids in protective custody. And the two finders were arraigned on multiple counts of child abuse, multiple counts. Mm-hmm. And they were held at a hundred thousand dollar bond. I think it was might have even been higher. And then um, and then two of the kids, according to uh, the Tallahassee police report that I got, two of the kids have been sexually abused. And then the U.S. Customs report, U.S. Customs got involved with it because there was child pornography. And they got a search warrant for the warehouse where the finders lived, and they found child pornography. And and, the warehouse is in, like, D.C., right? Yes, in Washington, D.C. And they found all kinds of really unsavory things. And and actually, the finders had been connected to a murder, too. And all of a sudden, the CIA came in and quashed the entire case— and those two finders were just let out of jail. And those kids were repatriated with the cult. And I thought to myself, I kind of thought I knew how the wor- world worked. But after I read that document, it just blew my mind. I mean, what what have I missed yeah. as far as my understanding of the world? What, what How is this even possible that the CIA goes to bat for some very strange people that are treating children nefariously. I mean, how how does that happen? So that started my odyssey. That was in 2002. And 
I've been on this Odyssey for the last 20 years. Wow. Damn. So what, what did the editor say when you're like, I got something, when you came back with that? Rather um, than like run of the mill. He said, you know, Satanism. Nick, um, let's just try to stick with Satanism. <laughs> 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 what do you, how, what, yeah, what do you think when you like how how many Satanists have you talked to and like what are they what are, what's their like life philosophy? Isn't it just pretty much like selfishness or like? Well, I mean, there's different types of Satanists. Because if that's the case, I might be a Satanist. <laughs> I'm pretty selfish. You with my would lifestyle. now, dude. You're not talking enough. There's <laughs> there, there's different types of Satanists, um, and they run the gamut. I uh, some of them it was very strange. Some of the Satanists that I talked to were really, really stupid, mm -hmm. and some of them were really, really smart. Yeah, I, I didn't find any Satanists in between. <laughs> but um, I was going to go to uh, one of the black masses. My here was my it was a simple plan. Uh, I'm going to go to this black mass and I'm going to write a, uh, an article about it. And one of the the high priest said I had to read this book written by one of the Satanists, uh, the founder of that particular satanic mm. sect. And I read the book and I said, well, you know, I read the book. And he said, well, you got to do this. And then I just, you know, he was trying to lead me down this primrose path to uh, <laughs> to embracing Beelzebub. <laughs> and I, yeah. I realized that they were, they were actually proselytizing to me. Yeah. And uh, it wasn't really like a religion that I felt attracted to. Sure. Didn't so, you have to like eat like, yeah, wasn't the part, you have to yeah. eat like a cum cookie? You were trying to get you to eat like <laughs> Yes, cum. well, that was one of the problems. Um, <laughs> Would your editor like, come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the host was the potentiated ministration and uh, semen of the high priestess and then the priest. On what? And what was the... Like, it, on, on like a flowery wafer. It, 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 with the Satanists, everything is anti, like it's an anti-host. Sure. You know? yeah. So, um, and it's an anti-black mass, whatever. But, um, well, that was the deal. If I read the book, I wouldn't have to take the anti-host. Right. And... Yeah. Um, oh, so, really? That was so, like if you don't read the... Yeah. Oh, that makes well, sense. You read the book and you won't have to... But then I read the book and I said, I read the book and I said, no, you still have to take the anti-host. Oh. So, oh, what the so, fuck? So I'm, I'm really up to... I, I like people to live up to their word. Um, that's important to me. And uh, it was kind this. of... It was kind of apparent to me that the... Uh, the, the people in the darker fraternity so didn't didn't share his truth the way that I did. But and you you were at an ash, an ashram right when you were younger. I lived in an ashram when I was uh, nineteen years old. How did you how did you fall into that? It's like a it's, it's not is that like it's not necessarily Hindu, but it's this like, was a Hindu. This was okay. a, a, a swami. He was okay. he was from India. He was a swami. He was a genuine Indian guru. The Raiders. When I, when, <laughs> when I was um, in my teens, I was really searching. Mm -hmm. um, and I tried all kinds of spiritual paths and then I ended up living on this ashram with a genuine Indian guru he was a swami which means he was celibate and um, so I got there and I was just I was thirsty for knowledge and um, and then I was talking to the swami one day and I could have swore I smelled cigarettes on his breath and you know I went to one of the people on the ashram who I would later call pod, the pod people um, I said, you know, I, you know, I could have sworn I smelled cigarettes on Swami's breath. And he goes, yeah, well, see, the deal with that is um, he has to have one vice that keeps him tethered to this plane of reality so he can teach us. <laughs> and, um, now, needless to say, that didn't make a lot of sense to me. And then I found that out that he was having sex with all these girls on the ashram. And then I found out he was embezzling money for uh, from, awesome. from his, from his more awesome. affluent initiates. And I was thinking to myself, that guy must be really spiritually developed. <laughs> <laughs> if, if he's got to do all that just to stay on this plane of reality. I, was, I think I mean, that's, that's why that, I was so for so long. <laughs> yeah. That was a bit of a swami. No. <sighs> Yeah, that was, I always find that intriguing when people end up on, because uh, they seem like a cool place to live. It's just a place you would go rather than like a Christian youth thing. It would just be like. I'm fairly certain could, every single one of those is that. I, what do you think? I don't know um, if I've heard of one story. You'd be smirching all the masters. I haven't heard of, I've never heard of one guru that wasn't definitely banging a bunch of the people. Yes, that's what I concluded. Because I, I looked into a lot of different gurus after that, and they all have lower chakra. <laughs> 
problems. Really? All, all, every guru has lower shock. Well, you know, they're old, ugly Indian men, and then they yeah. and then they and they're come trying here. to get Bob's and Vagin, <laughs> and they found the best way to get Bob's. That's true. And then they come here, and they have all these beautiful young American women who are spiritually starved. Throwing themselves at yeah. these, and then it's too much temptation. Yeah, how could they resist? Yeah, yeah, how could they resist? Yeah, it's like I, I found a book. Chakra. I found a book in a, a or like a used bookstore one time. They they write really good books though. Like I read, it was this was by a priest, and it was like one of the best little books on spirituality I ever read. And I'm like, I gotta Google this guy, pedophile. I was like, motherfucker, damn it. Yeah, well, that's, it. I mean, that's <laughs> I read it, uh, Rama's books, and I was really fascinated by them. And so, I mean, that's what why I ended up at that ashram. So what do you let's which one do what do you want to get into first yeah. here? Because I read the beginning of the Frank I read I read about half of the Franklin scandal. And like I said, I was falling asleep. I would listen to I listen to audiobooks at night. So I was listening to the Franklin scandal at night and it was fucking me up. Like every night I was like, Jesus Christ. And then I would start go- like I, I never went to sleep. I would just start Googling things like the finders. Immediately I started Googling yeah. that. And then I started going into like Pizzagate because it was in DC and they were attracting this like then I was like, is Pizzagate real? Like, you know, it's just every time I started reading, is Pizzagate real? I have no idea on that <laughs> right. one. I'm, yeah. I'm agnostic <laughs> that, towards good. pizza. With my philosophic training, um, I, I studied philosophy in college. I try to approach everything agnostically. I, I really try not to make judgments on something, even though it may seem like a tautological truth. I try to withhold judgment. And with Pizzagate, I'm agnostic. Yeah. Gotcha. But with the finders, it was the same. I mean, I was listening to you talk about it, but it was the same thing where it's like once you explain like six children were found with two dudes in suits. Yes. Were they wearing like suits? Yeah. And the children suits. are all malnourished enough so that a, just a regular person called the cops when they saw them. It's concerned citizens. And then yeah. they got yeah. nothing. It was like, yo, this is very weird. And then, yeah, there's yeah. no way they were like, no, we're just making sure they're good. We just like to dress nice yeah, and we like, didn't have the budget the for their kids? clothes yet. And the guys wouldn't talk, right, when they were getting interrogated. They had the card ready, the card yeah. to be like. Well, and one guy actually went unconscious when the police started to grill him. He went into a satanic <laughs> trance? <laughs> he, he played possum. I don't know if it was satanic, but uh, yeah, he just, he just went <laughs> unconscious. Yeah, It's a good way to it's, resist. It's in the U.S. I might Constitution. do that to my wife, just dead weight. <laughs> she starts talking to you. Get a you, you might have to you might have to hook your wife up with the finders, which yeah. I know might be. A, I don't know if I'd advise that, no. but you never know. That is crazy because you do. There's a lot of people I'm sure you know this who are delighted in being like that's all a bunch of bull. They don't want to hear any of it whatsoever. But that's like how much of it is like, like as you say, like some of it's conjecture, some of it is like like how much of the stuff you've done is like ends in kind of like like some nebulous weird stuff or like what's like factual anyone could take and be like this is well, this I actually think, happened. Uh, I mean, the Franklin scandal, I was very, very cautious with it and very, very careful. I wanted to nail everything because I knew what I was, the the book that I was writing was so antithetical to people's mundane reality that it was going to be met with very, very, a lot of skepticism. Mm -hmm. So, but what happened with me with the Franklin scandal is I was able to score like there were three grand juries that covered it up. Um, there were two grand juries in uh, Nebraska and one grand jury in Washington, D.C. Now, I don't know if your viewers are familiar with the grand jury, but grand juries are infamous for covering things up. Actually, like there was a grand jury in Florida looking into Epstein that said that Epstein hadn't molested a single child. What happens in a grand jury is a special prosecutor is chosen. And then grand jurors are just regular people that have come in to do jury duty and they've been funneled to a grand jury and it's not adversarial. The special prosecutor picks the evidence that is shown to the grand jurors and calls the witnesses. So special prosecutors have a tremendous amount of power over grand jurors. And actually there was a, uh, a New York judge that had a famous quip that grand jurors have so much power or special prosecutors, special prosecutors have so much power over grand jurors that they could get them to indict a ham sandwich. Yeah. So with the Franklin, I've indicted scan- a few of those. <laughs> <laughs> with the Franklin scandal, that those two grand juries in uh, Nebraska said that not a single child had been abused. Yeah, and uh, I read the 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 article you sent as far as like, and then this is gross detail, but one of the one of the reasons they were able to discount. The children who said they were molested by Epstein was one of them said he used a purple vibrator. 
And another one said he used a white vibrator. So they were like, well, these two are lying. What? Yeah, I mean, like it's he's just a one vibrator something like that. They only, oh, yeah. they only called one of the victims. Okay. One of the underage victims. And it was obvious that that was a cover-up job. Yeah. And it's really a shame that most Americans, because when you think of a grand jury, you think the gods of jurisprudence have spoken. But that's not the case at all. It's just a, a special prosecutor that's been chosen to show grand jurors what he thinks is compelling evidence. Yeah. And that's where a lot of cover up state places is we're... in grand juries. And then yes, everything yeah. is sealed in a grand jury. And what happened with me is I was able to get everything. I was able to get the sealed testimony and I was able to get the sealed exhibits from one of the corrupt grand juries in Nebraska, which at that point I, I was able to write the book and like I had a list of 60 victims. So, it was up to me to find the victims. And that was tough because a lot of those kids, and you see with Epstein too, you see with a lot of uh, pedophile networks, a lot of the kids come from lower socioeconomic backgrounds mm. and dysfunctional families, and that makes them ripe for uh, predators. Um, in this case, with, with the uh, Franklin scandal, Lawrence King, and also Craig Spence, mm -hmm. and with Epstein, Jeffrey Epstein, and all the predators that were around him. So it, finding them was very, very difficult because a, they, a lot of them had just dropped off the, you know, the plan, uh, uh, just dropped off the planet mm -hmm. because these kids were from really dysfunctional backgrounds, poor backgrounds and they were given money and repeatedly molested. And then once they lost their youthful marketability, they were expunged by the network and they went on to become criminals to support. They were all drug addicts yeah. or most of them were drug addicts. So they became criminals and then they ended up in prison. So it was very difficult to find a lot. A lot of them never really used their social security numbers. So, yeah. um, and I found them in projects. i I found one in a homeless shelter. I found one in a prison. I mean, they were they were difficult. Yeah, to find. They messed up. Yeah, yeah. What, what are they? How like are they like excited to talk to you? Or are they just kind of like who are you? Or like how did you get to like have them actually talk to you about this stuff? Well, it's you've got to be patient and you've got to be compassionate. I mean, I was very compassionate to all the victims that I met um, because of what they've been through, and. It's a matter of trust. I mean, you've got to build up trust with them. Sometimes the trust comes immediately and sometimes the 